Hello, Divorce Network. I am Cooperative Divorce Attorney Erica England. I'm Certified Family Law Specialist Neil Forrester. Together we are Split Decisions, a divorce network designed to help you lead your best life in any way that is impacted by divorce. Absolutely. And today we're talking about something that you don't hear about terribly often, but is incredibly important to many people. We have clients that have burning questions about this, and we want to be able to answer some of those for you today. So Neil, take it away. So I want to introduce you to Huckleberry Forrester, uh, a gentleman very near and dear to my heart. Uh, he is my only born son at this point. Uh, we're going to talk today about what the legal landscape would look like uh, if little Huckleberry would get involved in, in a uh, potential divorce case. Now, my wife is behind the camera, so no secrets here. We're not getting a divorce as far as she knows, so Huckleberry is not immediately at risk, but there are some issues that people frequently come to me with about what it's like to navigate uh, the divorce ground when you've got pets involved. And the first recognition that we need to have on the mediator side or the attorney side is regardless of our own relationship with our pets, it's very, very important that we respect our client's relationship with theirs. Absolutely. People are incredibly close. This is a part of their family. This is an important part of their life. And that's how the courts treat it, right, Neil? No, oh. it's not. <laughs> it's sad but true. Courts now, never fail to disappoint. It, very, very true. Um, now. The, the court in California is going to look at these at any pet issue as a property issue primarily. Um, that is starting to change. Um, there was recent legislation that passed uh, in the domestic violence arena where you can actually ask for protection for pets specifically in a domestic violence restraining order application. So that's important. Uh, that's maybe telegraphing a change um, from the traditional view as pets is just property to pets as something more than property, maybe not you know, rising to the level of you know, a child or children of a relationship, but something more certainly than just chattel, than just something to be owned. But the courts right now are in a position where a dog, a cat, is treated as a piece of property. And this means that when people dispute ultimately who gets to keep, the dog or the cat, then the court's looking at it like what? Well, they're looking at it to see, um, one, if there are ownership interests that have been created in the animal. In other words, if you, like Huckleberry, he was adopted. We adopted him from NorCal Boxer Rescue. Check out their site, ncbr.org, of which I am the president. Uh, get away, getting away from that, though, adoption contracts will frequently indicate who the owner of the pet is. Now, in California, if you adopt an animal, even if only one person is on the contract, and you're married at the time, there is the community property presumption that arises. Any property acquired during the marriage, regardless of who acquires it, is community property. So therefore, that pet would be community property. Now, if even only, if your adoption certificate says differently. Even if it says differently. Now, you have a title presumption that's going to spring into existence. You're going to have to have an argument about that. But the presumption of community property probably will prevail. Um, if you've got an a adopted animal before you get married and then you get you know, married later, it should be fairly clear that the, uh, that the animal is your separate property. Now that takes out of the equation any um, you know, influence that the relationship between you know, the spouses and the animal have. So no one's looking at poor Huckleberry and saying, Huckleberry, who are you bonded with? Huckleberry, who do you want to spend time with? Uh -huh. It devolves down to a pure question of law, who is the title owner of this animal? And that's not the greatest way to look at these situations. Something else I know about having pets is they are expensive. So looking at it from the other side, if there are debts that were incurred for the care of the animal, or if the animal has ongoing boarding needs, care needs, veterinary needs, how are those allocated between the spouses? Well, generally, those are going to be the responsibility of the spouse that's determined to be the owner. Um, so if you have a separate property animal, an animal that either pre-existed the marriage or was acquired and one person doesn't want anything to do with it or whatever the situation is, that separate property owner is going to be fully responsible, which means that if during the marriage, uh, you know, an exorbitant amount of money went into, into Huckleberry's care, for instance, mm -hmm. then, you know, the community would be owed money back for those expenses because it was not for the benefit of a community asset. So you cannot have it both ways, I think, is what you're saying. That's correct. If this is your separate property animal from prior to marriage, then these expenses could be reimbursable. 
On the other hand, if this is a community property asset, then any debts that were incurred during the marriage could be jointly that is, owed. That is absolutely true. This is one of the reasons that I think mediation is such a great option for people. I agree. And at your law firm, even though you excel at courtroom work, you also mediate. In mediation, we're talking very often about these intangible factors, or we're handling something in a way that a judge never would. Of course, we want people to be informed about what the law is, but the law isn't really helpful here. If you and your lovely wife are both bonded to Huckleberry and both committed to caring for Huckleberry, and a judge is going to treat Huckleberry as nothing other than an asset, then mediation is a really good option to help the two of you come to a parenting schedule. Yeah, essentially absolutely, absolutely right. And I'm always going to encourage my clients to be more evolved than simply falling back on the default rules for property, especially on pet issues, but on other issues as well. Now, if we're trying to resolve a question as to who's going to have an animal or who's going to you know, have parenting time, it's really just nothing more than you know, like a child custody question. Can we formulate a parenting plan for the animal? My former spouse and I had that, that same agreement, which she welched on, but needless to say, we, it worked for some period of time. And, and I always encourage my clients to do that because the default position is that, that, that spouses will sometimes try and use an animal as leverage or punishment even if they know that the animal is going to be benefited if they have continued involvement with the other spouse. So they'll try and, and use that. Very similar to what we see with children, exactly. unfortunately. Yeah, and easier to do because it's not a child, right? Yeah. It's just an animal, even though the animals have feelings just like children do. And speaking of children, this is an important consideration if you have pets. How bonded are the children to the pet? Because if the children are transitioning between two homes and that's something that's new and different for them, then it may be very helpful to look at whether it would be nice to have the pet with them as a transition assistant. Absolutely. Going back and forth between the houses. Taking a perspective sometimes from the children's point of view or as hard as this may seem from the pet's point of view, where is the pet going to be the happiest? and the most comfortable. This may be one of those things in a divorce that you ultimately win by giving up on it if you're gonna be creating love and happiness and security for your pet somewhere else. Absolutely agreed. So finally with pet custody, I know it can be very emotional for people and I wonder what suggestions you have for our listeners if they're facing a divorce but they're afraid of it because they really are scared that they might lose their pets. That's a really good question, and that's going to be a case-by-case -case kind of situation. Um, you just have to have, I mean, if you're worried about your safety or the safety of the animal, because a lot of times, you know, when you're in kind of an upset environment, you're afraid of some physical or emotional repercussions that the other side is going to visit upon you or upon the animal, you have to have a safety plan. It is not unusual for someone. This is particularly in a domestic violence type situation, which is a topic for, for another day, maybe a day a few weeks ago. But um, it, it's important for a person to have a safety plan for everyone in the household, not just yourself, but your kids and also your animals. And as I noted earlier, the Domestic Violence Prevention Act, and I believe it's uh, Family Code Section 6320, now has specific protections for animals. So you got to think about those things before you have and your exit. Side note, one of the best resources for putting together a plan to leave a violent or an abusive environment is Weave. More information about Weave can be found at weaveinc.org. That's a Sacramento area uh, domestic violence and abuse support network, but they will also assist people outside of the Sacramento Absolutely area. Absolutely right. So if you're not concerned about the abuse situation per se, but you're just afraid of divorce and what will happen with the animal, well, you're just not alone. There's a lot we don't control in divorce, and often it's trying to figure out how to balance and prioritize your needs and what you want to see happen next in your life. But we recognize that this isn't something that's silly, it isn't something that's easy, and though the law treats this in a very straightforward fashion, if you're working with an attorney and a mediator that's reasonable and sensible, then we're going to be working with you to create a parenting plan that works for you, for your children, for your pets. Absolutely right. More information about pet parenting can be found on splitdecisions.pro, and of course you can see us every week here on Facebook. Thanks so much for joining us, and until we meet you again, be well. Bye-bye.